Okay, so this is first lecture of rotational motion and center of mass. Basically, uh, this is a new series. Uh, new series is, uh, I really want to discuss key. Why this chapter is very, very, very important. It contains the entire information of all the previous topics that we have studied, whether it's uh, kinematics, right? Whether it's uh, dynamics or you would say uh, Newton's laws of motion. In this chapter, we are going to use all of these pre, uh, you know, previous art top, uh, previous topics. Okay, so this is a very nice and important one. And uh, when it comes to the weightage of this particular chapter, so um, the average would be three to four questions. Okay, so by this I mean that you need to, uh, you know, you will get. At least 12 to 16 marks out of this chapter. So again, uh, this is a chapter which we cannot, you know, ignore. This is important for us. This, so uh, make sure that you will understand every bit of it. In today's lecture, I'm going to cover uh, the types of motion, the analogy of angular variables with linear variables, and these two things: torque and moment of inertia. Okay. Today it is 16th of Jan. Let's start our lecture. Huh. This is something that I want to share. I think your next test would be on 21st of Jan. Uh, you will be get confirmed about the test uh, in your WhatsApp group. Take care. Just for time being, make sure that you will prepare Newton's laws of motion for this one. Take care. Newton's laws of motion. This is your physics syllabus. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Cool. So make sure that you will take care. Okay. Let's start. Do you know anything about this word, rigid body? Anyone? Do you know uh, okay, what is rigid body? What do we mean by rigid body? Anyone? Changes in shape and size when we apply the force. Uh, Jennifer, please come again, beta. Your voice is not clear. Ma'am, it changes shape and the size when we apply the force on it. It changed its shape and size, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Miss, okay, Miss is also uh, getting along with this definition. Shikha, do you want to say something else? Yes, please say now. Shikha, do you want to add something? Harshita, Namrata? When the distance between two particles is constant. So it means that if you are applying a force, then there would be uh, no deformation, right? If the yes, uh, distance is same. So it is completely out of phase while mm -hmm. a definition of uh, what Jennifer said. Because she said that shapes and shape and size would change if you apply the force. And you are saying that shape and size will not change even you apply the force. Right, Harsha? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then Namrata? I... Yeah. Um, just wait, wait, Miss Mami, uh, for a second. Namrata, can you continue with her? Ma'am, no change of shape, size when they applied force. Very nice. Miss Ma? Yes, ma'am. Yes. A solid body in which determination is zero or negligible. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I want to see, uh, see, um, uh, Jennifer, rigid body is an ideal one. It is an, it is an ideal concept. Okay. Rigid body are those bodies in which the distance in between two particles will no, will not change. Okay. 
in between two internal particles will not change. No matter what kind of force you are applying, at what degree you are applying it, but there would be no deformation at all you, you will get. Okay? You will get no deformation. This is a rigid body. Okay. So this is the uh, important definition. Again, uh, this is something which do not exist in real life, in practical life, because all the objects that are exist uh, on this planet, if you are applying some kind of force on it, they will show deformation, at least on an atomic level. Okay? They will show the deformation. Now, let's continue with the types of motion. What are the uh, different types of motion? First is linear motion. Or you could say translational motion. Okay. So translational motion is something like this. Let me draw a diagram for you. Mm -hmm. This is a rigid body. Uh, it is not that my drawing is bad. Okay, rigid body can be uh, represented like this. So this is the rigid body that we have. And let's mark few points. I marked point A and then point B. Okay. Let's consider some another point C over here. I uh, applied some kind of force on this body. And after some time. Uh -huh, wait a second. After some time, this body reaches at this point, and this is your point A. Okay, this is your point C at new position, and this is your point B. So, if you see uh, here, all the trajectories are a straight line. And they are parallel to each other. Do we get this? The trajectories are parallel to each other. And they are straight lines. Yes or no? Yes. yes so whenever you get this condition, whenever you get the trajectories are parallel to each other and they are straight lines, then you will say that body is under translatory motion. Is that fine? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so to be more precise, when you got this condition, ki, uh, the trajectories are straight lines. In this particular condition, you can say ki this is a rectilinear translation motion. Okay. This is something that you can say. Now let's come to the another definition, okay, which is known as uh, Let's not mark it as a second part. It is the second part of translation motion. Okay? The first part of translation motion is rectilinear translation motion. The other one is curvilinear. Curvilinear translation motion. For example, I have another rigid body which looks like this. Let's say. Okay? And after some time, I'm trying my best to make it, you know, identical since it's a discussion of the same body. But uh, are they are. Mm -hmm. Hello, just consider these are the same. Eh? So let's say ki this is the particle A, particle B, particle C. Okay, A, B, and C. What I saw the trajectories are like this. Okay, A. B, C. So can you uh, observe this thing ki here? Uh, trajectories are still parallel to each other, right? 
they yes, are still yes. parallel to each other but they are not straight lines one saying that they are uh, parallel to each other but they are curves so this kind of motion is called curvilinear translational motion is that fine if you get the trajectories as a straight line then it would be rectilinear translational motion is that okay yes ma'am okay let's come to the second type of the motion and it would be your rotational motion rotational motion is a very interesting kind of motion because it gives you a lot of insights about you know uh, a moving object basically just give me a second to draw that for an example this is a rigid body that we have and i said ki i uh, hinged this body at this particular point okay i hinged this body and this is the axis about which i am rotating it now after some time this body will look like this now yes ma'am okay just please ignore the drawing i'll try my best you know to make it nice and clean but this is what i uh, you know the maximum that i can achieve right now so uh, let's say this is point a this is point b this is point c okay their new position would be like this this is point b and this would be the point c yes or no yes so yeah, yeah. basically yes, we are moving this body in this direction you know about this axis we are rotating it so now here i am getting one uh, strange observation that this particle a is not moving at all since it is a hinged point a fixed point right this point b it follows this particular trajectory and this point c has covered the maximum distance and i'm observing this thing for the same time and now you are uh, observing that in rotational motion every particle has different uh, amount of uh, motion right different amount of distance coverage yes or no yes ma'am yep so this is basically a rotational motion in which every particle revolves around a fixed point having different different trajectories and of course these particles covered different amount of distance in a particular uh, time interval is that okay yes ma'am okay so basically you would say ki these all particles are doing circular motion have you studied about circular motion Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The circular motion is some kind, ah, uh, something like this, as you can see on your screen. You can see that this ah uh, green particle is moving on a circular track. It has some velocity ah uh, in tangent, you know, along the tangent, which is ah uh, expressed by red arrow. and a acceleration towards the center which we known as centripetal acceleration and it is very important in order to the existence of this circular motion yes or no it is supposed to be there okay. yes ma'am cool so beta you can say one thing and it is very important and you should know about it that rotational motion that rotational motion is the collection okay rotational motion is the collection of circular motion is that fine yes ma'am do you want to ask something or should i move to next slide you can okay so okay okay there is no doubt from your side now i want to ask one thing i Uh, tell you ki bhai in this case every particle is moving a different linear distance right they are covering different different distance at uh, in a given time interval yes or no okay so can you uh, name few quantities which are 
same for every particle on this body? Like they are moving with different, different radius. They are covering different, different distance. That's OK. That's something which I got, which you got. It's completely fine. Now I want to know, is there any physical quantity which is same for all the particles in a rotational motion? Can you name a few quantities? Mm -hmm. Come on. Um, can you repeat your question? I said, ki, uh, I just told you that every particle is covering a different, uh, you know, different, different linear distance in a fixed interval of time or in a given interval of time. So can you tell me a quantity which is same for these motions, for these particles, basically? OK. Um, Hello? Mom, talk. Uh, okay, we talk. We don't have to talk. We discussion ka point nahi hai nahi uh, aur kuch anything angular, angular velocity exactly jennifer very nice these all particles are moving with same angular velocity okay they are having same angular velocity and why uh, they have the same angular velocity because they are covering the same angular distance in a given interval of time. See, point B also covered this theta. Point C also covered this theta. So their angular variables are same. Okay? But as we know, that angular variables are connected to linear variables with this R. And this R is different for every particle. That's why uh, you know we are saying ki their linear variables are different. But their angular variables are same. So will you remember these two things about uh, rotational motion? First thing, angular variables are same. And second thing, rotational motion is the collection of circular motion. Is that fine? Yes, ma'am. OK. Let's come to another motion. And this is known as planar motion. I really love to explain this topic with the help of one example. And that one example is rolling of wheel. I think all of you uh, know this thing. Uh -huh, wait a minute, let me let me correct it. And let me draw a wheel first. OK, better. See, uh, let's say this is the tire of your cycle. If you are uh, you know, paddling the cycle, this cycle will move in forward direction, right? You will cover some linear distance from this point A to B. You will uh, reach at this point by pedaling your cycle. Yes or no? Yes. OK. So you have covered some kind of linear distance. But while you are covering this, this wheel is also uh, you know, rotating about a point. This wheel is rotating always. For example, let's say this is point A, which I marked. This is point B. And let me draw a few intermediate uh, situations. Uh, so this point B would be here. But this A, it can come to this position, right? After some time, maybe at this position, B is it here. But A could be like, say, uh, uh, it could be here. Are you getting my point? So this wheel is rotating as well as moving in forward direction, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So rolling uh, of a wheel is a nice example to define planar motion as the sum of translational motion and rotational motion. OK, it contains both translational motion as well as rotational motion. If you see, this point B is moving in the forward direction only. But the entire, but the, all the particles on this wheel will do rotational motion. Is that fine? Yes, OK. Cool. 
uh, I think uh, th this is all about the types of motion. Let's cover one important thing, and that is analogy. It will help you a lot. Okay? This slide will help you a lot in all the questions in, in this chapter. Okay? A lot. So it's analogy in between linear and angular variables. Okay. Here you will have linear variables. And here, angular. As you know, that in linear variable, we get linear displacement. The analogy of this linear displacement in angular terms is theta. Here we have linear velocity and here it would become angular velocity. Here we have acceleration. Here we would have alpha. Okay. Here we will have force and in angular terms, we will get torque. This is torque. Uh, we will get in uh, in the depth of this, okay, later. Then we have mass in linear uh, variables. Here we have inertia. And I'm saying, you know, a second, it is moment of inertia. And these are the analogies. They are doing kind of si uh, similar action. What linear displacement is doing in this uh, linear variables in linear terms in kinematics okay the same thing or similar at least that function is carried out by theta in angular terms do we get this yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma cool so i'm going to give you a uh, few questions kindly solve them and then we'll yeah yes harshita please Mom, exactly what is mean by analogies? Uh, you could say kind of replica. That if the, for example, you have equation V is equals to U plus A T, and uh, this is if A is constant, right? So if I said ki alpha is constant, okay, you could say ki ma'am omega final is equals to omega initial plus alpha t. Do you get that? This is the replica. The replica of final velocity is final angular velocity. The replica of initial velocity is initial uh, angular velocity. At the place of A, you will get, uh, you will write alpha and T would be the same. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, see, that's why I'm saying that this analogy in this slide will help you a lot. Because whenever you feel stuck in angular variables, now just go and uh, remind, uh, and then, you know, just uh, think about this slide and focus ki bhai iski jagah pe main kya place kar sakti hu that at the place of omega i can use v and i can solve it in you know in linear fashion and then i will answer it uh, in the angular terms theek hai sometimes uh, you will find linear variables more comfortable as, in comparison to angular one because you are dealing with linear variables for a very long time angular is something which is new to you so I would consider ki bhai linear variables are your comfort zone. Na? So if you find something difficult in angular terms, go with the linear variables and just replace them in the end. Uh, and this kind of thing is OK when you're doing MCQs. Because if you are doing it in your boards, then you will get zero marks because their step marking would be considered. Na? Here I'm uh, considering only options. Na? Ki you are just, uh, I'm OK if you're uh, selecting the right option. Okay? That is the point. Yes, ma'am. OK, let's come to the question. Question here, ki if omega is equals to t square plus 4, then find theta at t is equals to 2 second, OK? If theta is equals to 0 at t is equals to 0, also calculate number of revolutions made in two seconds okay you need to find out two uh, questions over here or two things i gave you an expression for omega okay i want you to calculate theta at this particular uh, instant 
and uh, I think I gave you some additional information here. I also want you to calculate number of revelations this uh, wheel or this something made in two seconds. Okay. Remember one thing: when you feel stuck in angular variables, go and deal it with linear ones. So it's eighteen fifteen right now. Kindly answer me uh, within two minutes. Anjali, so time is up. So any answers? Anyone? <clears throat> Should I go ahead with the solution? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. See, I have, I have, I have, I have omega is equals to t squared plus 4. That's it. It is very important for me. Now I need to find out theta. If you are getting stuck with this equation, I said, hey, go and deal with linear variables. So basically, you have something called linear velocity, and they are asking you to find out the linear displacement. How would I execute it? I think with the help of integration. Right? Yes, ma'am. So in this, uh, in this sense, you can write ki omega would be d theta by dt. As you can say, ki v is equals to ds by dt. Right? I want to calculate d theta. So it would be omega times of dt. Now integrate it. And for integration, you will have you have this additional information that at uh, theta is 0, at t is equals to 0, at some time t, which is here, 2 seconds, you need to find out the theta. So let's assume ki, uh, it would be two. Uh, it would be theta. Just put it here. So when you integrate d theta, you would get theta. And uh, while integrating this thing, you need to substitute the value of omega, which is t square plus 4 multiplied by dt. And integration runs from 0 to 2. Just solve it. It would be t cubed by 3 plus 4t. And limit goes from 0 to 2, right? It would become 8 by 3 plus 8 and 0, 0, 0. Just solve it. So I think it would become 3, 8, 24, 24, 8. Uh -huh, uh, 3, 8, 24, 24 by 8. How much is it? 32 by 3, right? 32 by 3 radians. Have you got it? Is it difficult? Okay, you need to respond. Got it. Okay. Harshta? Ma'am, can you explain again? Okay. See, there's a very simple uh, thing. Ki if I want to calculate uh, velocity or acceleration, okay? if I have displacement, 
and I want to calculate velocity, I would differentiate, right? If I have velocity and I want to calculate acceleration, I would differentiate. But if I have acceleration and I want to calculate velocity, I need to integrate. If I have velocity and I want to calculate displacement, I have to integrate. Yes or no? Yes, yes ma'am. Similarly, in this question, they gave you omega, the angular velocity. Right? And they are asking you to give the value of angular displacement. What I said? Ki please, if you're getting stuck with this angular thing, go with the linear one now. They are giving you V. They are uh, asking you about the S. Don't you uh, supposed to do this integration? You're supposed to do this, na? Ki bhai, aap integration karo. Yes, ma'am. So that's what I uh, did here. As you can write, V is equals to dS by t by dt. I wrote exactly in a similar pattern that omega is equals to d theta by dt. I need to calculate d theta, so I wrote this expression in this format. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, can we uh, do the second part of this question? The second part of this question is talking about. Uh, wait a second. Is Gayatri uh, there in the class? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Gayatri, are you getting everything? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's cool. Namrata, uh, is it fine or should I repeat it again? Fine, ma'am. Okay. See, uh, although I love that you are uh, dropping the uh, text and everything, but still, uh, please open your mic and talk to me directly. That is much more appreciated. Okay? So, please do that. Let's come to the uh, second part of this question. They want you to give the number of revolutions that made in two seconds. Okay, number of revolutions. Just tell me one thing. If I took one revolution, what theta uh, would I travel? What is the theta? What is the angular displacement for one revolution? What is the angular distance, Bacha? For one complete revolution, what is the angular distance? By what degree you traveled so uh, so that you could say, yeah, I completed one revolution? Come on. Degree. Exactly. It is 2 pi radian. Very good. So I guess I get uh, the value of one radian, which would be 1 by 2 pi revolution. They, asking, they are asking me about the theta angle. Okay, so it would be theta by 2 pi revolution. Now, in this manner, you get a formula. Okay, you get a formula of number of revolutions. Now, they are asking you, na, ki bhai, t is equals to 2 second mein, how many uh, revolutions you have made. So, just use this one. You can write ki number of revolutions would be, what is theta? Theta is 32 by 3, okay, Mul divided by 2 pi. And you will get 2, 6, 16, 16 by 3 pi as your answer. Have you got it? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Okay. Um, we don't have to put the value of pi now. No, 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 that would be fine. Actually, uh, this is something that you can go according to your, uh, you know, options, okay? Philal, in this question, you don't have any options, so we will be fine with pi. Okay. Now, there is one question for you. I said, if alpha is equals to minus 2 radian second inverse square, then if I gave you the value of alpha, then option A, omega increases. Option B, omega decreases. Option C, omega remains constant. Right? Or option D, omega may increase or decrease. Tell me, what would be the option? And you have only this one information with you. Okay? Tell me.
हाँ जी हैव यू गॉट द आंसर एनी ऑप्शन ओके लेट मी डू अ ड्रिल हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर गोइंग अलोंग विद द ऑप्शन ए प्लीज रेज योर हैंड सो दैट आई कैन हैव अकाउंट नो नो वन ऑप्शन बी हाँ इज एन एनी वन ओके सोनी वेरी नाइस कूल आई गॉट फर्स्ट आंसर एंड दैट इज ऑफ सोनी ठीक है शी इज गोइंग विद द ऑप्शन बी एनी वन एल्स नो ओके how many are of uh, going with the option c with option d i mean that's the last option okay jennifer and guy 3 and Okay, there's so many now. So everyone is going with option D, right? Shikha, yes. Namrata, Lavanya, Miswa. Is there anyone left? Namrata. Okay, so it's option D, right? बिल्कुल इट्स ऑप्शन डी सी ओनली यू नो एक्चुअली जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इट सी इफ द साइन ऑफ एल्फा एंड ओमेगा आर सेम ठीक है इफ द साइन ऑफ एल्फा एंड ओमेगा आर सेम इट कुड बी पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव इट कुड बी नेगेटिव नेगेटिव राइट इन बोथ द केस दू कुड से मैम ओमेगा इज इंक्रीजिंग why because alpha is supporting the omega but if we have alpha omega of different signs right means positive negative or negative positive in that case you would say ki ma'am omega is decreasing as alpha is opposing so basically with the value uh, with the value of only alpha you cannot say whether it's decreasing or increasing it could be both theek okay? hai that's why it's option d is that fine Yes, sir. Yes, very sir. nice. Very nice. Let's solve this one question. And question is: If theta is equals to t cube plus t square plus one, then find omega alpha centripetal acceleration v at t is equals to two second. ठीक है? And you have one thing that radius is two meter. because i'm saying na centripetal acceleration it means i'm talking about a circular track and the radius of that track is 2 meter is that fine yes ma'am very nice very nice very nice solve it uh it's 1829 right now you have 2 uh, minutes to solve this question theek okay? hai answer me
Have you completed the problem? No, ma'am. I get the answer. Ha, please tell me. Share your answer. Seventeen meter per second. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Basically, you know, na, ki omega is supposed to be in radian per second. Alpha in radian per second is square. Ha? Huh? Because omega and alpha are angular variables. Centripetal acceleration and velocity, they are your linear variables. So whenever you have to deal with angular variables, go with radian. Okay, Ms. Ba? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I only find angular velocity. Okay. Okay, uh, so do you want me to demonstrate how to solve this question? Yes, ma'am. See, you have here this thing. The theta is equals to t cube plus t square plus 1. Okay? In the first part, I need to calculate the omega. So just write down the relation of omega and theta. It is d theta by dt. Just differentiate this equation. t cube plus t square plus 1. And uh, they are asking you to find these variables at t is equals to 2 seconds. When you differentiate it, you will get something like this. And just substitute the value of t as 2. Right? So when you solve it, you would get 3 into 4, which would be 12. And 2 plus 2 is 4. And it, you will get 16 radian per second. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So, is everyone following along? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Yes, ma'am. Take it. Let's come to the second part. Uh, they are asking you the alpha. So, alpha is what? Either you can write d2 theta by dt2 or you can write d omega by dt. So I guess you uh, just calculate the omega in the terms of t, and it is 3t squared plus 2t. Just write it down. The 3t squared plus 2t, it would become 6t plus 2. Again, calculate alpha at t is equals to 2 seconds. So it would become 6 into 2 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2, and it would be 14 radian per second square. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, let's come uh, for question third. They're asking you to find the uh, centripetal acceleration. So centripetal... Omega... Hanji, beta. Mom, at Omega, I did uh, integration. So how it is to determine to do the differentiation? See, I just told you in the previous question that remember one thing, when you have to move from displacement to velocity, no matter whether it's linear or angular one, you should go with the differentiation, right? And but theta uh, already velocity is given to us, no? They have give you, they have given you the theta. Okay, they want you to find the omega. So they uh, have, we have displacement, and we need to calculate velocity. So we should differentiate. If we have velocity, and they are asking you about the acceleration then also uh, you should do differentiation. And uh, since differentiation and integration are two different operators, right? And they are just opposite to each other. So if you have acceleration and you want to calculate velocity, go with the integration. If you have velocity and they, and they are asking you about the displacement, go with the integration. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So in this question, they uh, gave us the omega. 
sorry theta and they want us to calculate the omega it means they are we have uh, displacement and we are going to find out the velocity that's why it took the way of differentiation here now in this question they want me to find the alpha again the given condition is theta but it is uh, a privilege for us that we just find out the omega otherwise you can also double differentiate the theta and you will get the alpha is that fine yes ma'am okay so now we have to calculate the centripetal acceleration, which can be expressed as v square by r or r omega square. So I think you have r, which is 2, and omega is something that you've just calculated. Omega is 16 radian per second. Discuss. Just put the value. So it would be 2 into 256, and it would become 2612, 1 carry, 2, 5, 10, 1, 11, 2, 5, 2, 4, 5, 1, 2 uh, meter per second square, right? And in the fourth part, we need to calculate the V. See, V is equals to R omega. R is 2, omega is 16. It would become 32 and uh, meter per second. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, take care. I think you are getting confused uh, at this analogy wala portion. So, I'm just giving you one more, uh, you know, I'm giving it one more try. Uh, so, just try to understand it. Do we get this basic thing? If we have displacement and wants to calculate velocity, we should do differentiation. If we have velocity or displacement and they are asking you to find out acceleration, you still uh, need to go with differentiation. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. And vice versa, of all the uh, steps, you will get uh, those things by integration. Fine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is your linear variable, this is your linear variable, and this is also your linear variable. This is angular variable, this is angular variable, and this is angular variable. They are connected to each other with one thing, and that is S is equals to R theta, V is equals to R omega, A is equals to R alpha. Okay? But these things are only for circular motion. Okay? The reason is, because in circular motion, the radius, this is the radius factor, radially outward. Okay? It is always perpendicular to the velocity of the body. Okay, na? It is always perpendicular. Even if you are uh, getting the angular acceleration, na, it is moving in this di direction. The omega is in this direction. Alpha is also in this direction. And alpha and R is still perpendicular to each other. So for circular motion, this is a uh, privilege for us that all the components are perpendicular to each other. That's why we can write it exactly in this manner. And uh, it is uh, you know, a good fortune for us also because 90% question are depending upon this particular phenomena. So you will always remember it, ki how you can connect linear variables with angular ones. Is that fine? Yes, ma'am. OK. I just uh, told you about the analogies. So I guess that is also uh, fine. I'm giving you one more thing. And that is equation of motion. Equation of motion okay, under Uniform acceleration. See, you guys already know that for linear case, if acceleration is constant, you can have three equation of motion, right? You can have V is equals to U plus AT, S is equals to UT plus half AT square, and uh, V square is equals to U square plus 2AS. Similarly, if you have uh, wait a second. If you have alpha constant, right, then you can have uh, omega final is equals to omega initial plus alpha t. Theta is equals to omega initial t plus half alpha t square. And then omega square final is equals to omega square initial plus 2 alpha theta. Okay. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Take him. 
Now, this is all about the constant accelerations. What if you don't have the constant acceleration? What if, what if you have a variable acceleration or a variable alpha? No problem. In that case, we will move towards the 100% definition, and that is v is equals to dx by dt, and uh, a is equals to dv by dt, right? Or you can write it as v dv by dx, okay? This is something. Similarly, you can get here that omega is equals to d theta by dt, alpha is equals to d omega by dt, or omega d omega by d theta. Is that fine? Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. See, these three slides and that one slide of analogy, these are very important for you. Okay? Mark it as important one. Okay? These are important for you. Then can you share the PDF? Yeah, I, I'm sharing all the PDFs on the bit.ly link. Okay, please explore that link continuously. Uh, see, I will show you even that bit.ly link over here. It is here. Just wait a second. You just need to type bit.ly slash khushi ma'am and see here you have DCP batch, right? Click on DCP batch and you're getting everything. Okay. See upper, you will get the kinematics PDF. And here I'm uplo uploading all the PDFs, whether it's uh, you know Newton's laws of motion, PYQs, everything is there. You just need to uh, explore this page. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So basically, uh, I have uploaded even the solution uh, wali slide. You are getting the solution of every question here. The, uh, okay, it's got shut, but okay. You can have uh, this slide. Let's come to this one. I just want to take your five more minutes to solve, uh, to express one thing. Is that fine? Can I take? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma very sweet of, so sweet of you. Very nice. Good. So I want to introduce torque with you guys. Torque is a replica of force. Okay. In physics, we called it as amount of turning. Okay. Or we can call it as a moment of force. So rotation is all about you know ki how much we rotate that body what is the degree of rotation how much am uh, amount of turning is there that is something which is related to torque for an example you have a rod let me draw that rod here for example you have a rod here uh, like this okay and uh, here we have this axis of rotation Axis of rotation is that uh, imaginary axis about which this entire body is rotating. For example, you have a door in your house. Okay? The door is fixed at one end uh, and you can rotate that door about that fixed particular axis. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Exactly. So remember that thing. Let's say this is of R length and you have applied a force F in this direction. Okay, it is making some angle theta with the horizontal, and I want you to calculate the torque for me. So you would say, "Ki ma'am, uh, either we can resolve this force or we can resolve this r." So in the case first, we are dealing with resolution of force. So I think we can write it as f cos theta and f sine theta, right? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, uh, just tell me one thing. Can F cos theta rotate this rod? Can F cos theta produce rotation in this rod? Yes or no? No, ma'am. Uh, and... Uh, can you explain why?
एक बात बताओ बच्चा इफ एफ कॉस थीटा सी एफ कॉस थीटा इज लाइंग अलोंग द लेंथ ऑफ द रॉड राइट it is like ki you are applying a horizontal force on a door and you are trying to open it by that uh, force does that happen i think the uh, horizontal force will pull out the door but it cannot produce the rotation yes or no bhai aap kuch fixed axis se f cos theta ko laga kar door ko tod sakte ho ukhad sakte ho par ghuma thodi sakte ho hai na हुआ नहीं समझ आ रहा आई यू नॉट गेटिंग इट ओके सी दिस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल एटलीस्ट रिस्पॉन्ड डू यू लाइक इट और नॉट डू यू गेटिंग इट आर यू गेटिंग इट और नॉट नो मैम ओके जस्ट जस्ट सेट इट इन दैट वे ना सो दैट आई कुड ट्राई डिफरेंट मेथोडोलॉजी और समथिंग डिफरेंट I am saying this f cos theta is along the length of rod, and if it is applying along the length of rod, can it produce any uh, rotation? So answer would be no. It can take out the door. It can, you know, it is trying to pull out the door from this fixed axis. It cannot produce rotation. Rotation can always produced by the perpendicular component of force. Always. You can try it with your door. ठीक है? It is always the perpendicular component that can produce the rotation. That's why the torque can be represented as R into F sine theta. R is also a vector quantity. F is also a vector quantity, and uh, that's why you can write it as R cross F. This is the torque. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. ओके ठीक है सो बेसिकली दिस इज द डेफिनेशन टॉर्क इज आर क्रॉस एफ द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ टॉर्क वुड बी आर एफ साइन थीटा ठीक है दैट्स इट सो ठीक है फॉर टू डेज लेक्चर दिस इज इट इन नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल टॉक अबाउट मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड एवरी अदर थिंग इज दैट फाइन विल टॉक अबाउट मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड थियोरम्स ओके okay okay so thank you so much for being so nice just revise the notes thank you ma'am yeah take it take care bye bye thank you ma'am welcome bachcha welcome harshita bye 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 bye